Justice. Good evening, everyone. Your Excellency, the first, the first Lady of the Republic of Cyprus. Former and current members of the government. The Women's Federation for World Peace International President. The Women's Federation for World Peace European President, leaders and representatives of national and international organizations, friends and members of the Women's Federation. Welcome to the Women's Federation for World Peace 20th Annual Leadership Conference. This year under the title, Transforming Our World Through Advancing Peace culture of peace and human dignity. The need for peace has become increasingly important. Wars, conflicts, terrorism are causing significant harm to, society, to our societies, to our economies, to the environment, making it vital to adopt strategies that promote peace and human dignity. I'm Marcia Diabello, I'm the Secretary General for the Women's Federation for World Peace Europe, hereafter WFWP. I'm honored to serve you as the MC for this ceremony of inauguration of our conference this weekend. Before we proceed with words and introductions, I would like to invite you to stand up Let's make one minute of silence for the victims of conflicts, recent conflicts, wars, and uh, catastrophes globally. So let's do that. It's my pleasure and a joy to invite WFWP President in Europe, Mrs. Michi Toma, who would like to address us a few welcoming words. Mrs. Toma is WFWP International Vice President. She is WFWP Europe President, and she is WFWP President in the UK. So let's give her a round of applause. To, um, for us to meet. We used to meet every year you know, as on European level as leaders and NGO leaders and uh, grassroots activists. Um, so due to the COVID pandemic, we couldn't be. So this is a real huge reunion. It's the first time we've come together for in four years of not seeing each other. So I know some of your familiar faces and some already new people here. So it's a great 
great opportunity we forge deeper friendships with each other. So, uh, as you know, as you observe this one minute silence, you know, there's um, so much conflict going on in the world, and there are very many flashpoints, you know, and we have to question why, why is all this happening? It is really important as women, we take this kind of role to find solutions, and I think because the absence of women, we, we have to find a way we can be more present in the negotiating tables and where the decisions are made. Of course, there are many women who have pioneered these paths, but more collectively we can work together so that we can find this, uh, a lasting peace and solution to our problems in the world, which affect our children, which will affect our grandchildren and future generations. So there's always a starting point and it can be from that. So um, also I'd like to just mention, you know, Peace is a very big word, you know, but actually peace has to start within ourselves first and then ripple out actually into our, our families, into our neighbours, into our communities, societies, and eventually to the world. But it is a, uh, important for that. And also diversity is, you know, we have to have, we're living in a, a world of, of people of different faiths and cultures and races, so that, that how to embrace and work together, find a commonality with each other, and move forward together, and to be more inclusive, a very inclusive society where we can really create this cultural peace. So during this conference, I really hope that you can make new new friendships and really build partnerships, because we need each other. We don't want to reinvent the wheel again and again, but there are many organizations that are doing amazing things, actually, by dealing with crucial issues, so we want to forge our, our relationships close to each other. So let's enjoy, and I'm so happy that the, the first lady is here with us. Thank you so much. We know that be, your, you being here with us is like really giving the stamp of uh, how much women are so important, and even our own role as the diplomats and the important uh, positions that you have. Great role model for us. Thank you so much. And let's enjoy the evening and enjoy the conference. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Toma, for these warm and heartfelt words. Thank you very much. Next, I'm pleased to introduce Mrs. Moriko Hori. President of the Women's Federation for World Peace International. She is also president of WFWP Japan. She is co-president of the Council for Peace and Reunification of the Korean Peninsula in Nashimoto, Japan. So let's welcome this story with a warm. systematic 
genocide. Every morning, there's a sound of whistle. They start killing um, the Hutu and Tutsi. They are saying, you know, what do you say? They are same people, but um, because of the propaganda and political reason, um, they are forced to fight against each other, and many Tutsi were killed because they are a little bit smarter and they're a little bit rich than you know other tribes. So <clears throat> mainly men were killed, but women they were raped and in front of their children and there are many genocide orphans and the country itself was devastated. So when our volunteers of women's tradition uh, went to Rwanda, it was 1995, uh, we asked local people what we can do. And the answer was, please make vocational school for those orphans and street children so that they can get some skill to survive. So we did that. After 25 years, more than 3,000 children graduate from our school, but only 40% get a job. Because the government decided they can go to job training school only for one year. That's not enough. So this time we decided to um, build job training center for graduates so that they can train um, they can do some internship to get a job. So um, that's why I actually this this one is from Ghana and this is from Rwanda. And I always um, actually when I every time I go to Rwanda I visit the houses of our students. And this time when I went there, um, that one student, she's 16 years old, but when I went there, there was three children. She's not married, but she was raped, so she had three children, but the men just you know, disappeared. And when I went there, she offered one banana. <coughs> but I thought maybe, it's you know, I refused to eat it. And later, the um, teacher told me that was the only food for them. Usually, if they get eat once a day, you know, they're lucky. But usually they don't, you know, they have some way to find food. So, I live in Japan. We eat three times a day, sometimes four times a day. I eat, you know, cookies and you know some snacks between. And my kids, they complain a lot. <laughs> Mommy, I want this game. You know, I want to go somewhere. You know. But the children in Africa and many other developing countries, you know. Their situation is so much different from, you know, kids in Japan. So, Women's Federation for Workers, we are the organization to, of course, we have big visions to create peace, but we are women as mothers, sisters. We think number one is our family, that's why. My colleagues, they put so much effort to love and care, you know, people in need. So um, I was going to say something else, but um, actually, this time our title is you know, How to Create Peace. 
I learned a lesson from uh, people in Rwanda. They have really good um, peace education. They teach, before you forgive someone, you need to learn how to forgive yourself. In order to forgive yourself, first, you have to put something in your stomach. If you're hungry, you're not ready to forgive. So also, people have access to medicine, and they have to have some kind of um, say security. That's why the country of Rwanda is trying to develop to let people forgive themselves so that they can forgive others. So that concept was shock was shocking for me. So I learned a very good lesson in Rwanda. So I will learn more about how to create peace and how to forgive myself and how to forgive others. I will apply that concept in East Asia. So I hope I can apply those concepts in uh, chapters. We have many chapters in our um, organization and there are many conflicts. Today we had a moment of silence for those who are suffering and I think women are the key to stop this madness and today I know the ladies, the professional and our excellencies I think together can change, we need to change this world, you know. Okay. 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 So, um, today we're going to open the and tomorrow we're going to have wonderful sessions. So please be free to talk about what you think to create peace and how we need to. Um, women, of course, we have wonderful men, a few men, so, together with men. We need to do something. We need to change this world. So let's start to do at this moment. So I believe you can do it, we can do it. So women are the key. That's my point. So thank you so much for coming and please enjoy. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Hori, for such a sincere message, real message of what's happening in our world today. Um, we feel that uh, we are immersed in a, in a difficult time, but still we are, are hopeful and uh, we are uh, sure that we can contribute to create peace in this world. So we are going to do it. Uh, at this point, I would like to invite Dr. Zoe Bennett, WFWP International Vice President, she is also WFWP Middle East President, and she is the president of WFWP in Cyprus. So uh, the host in country of our uh, event, and she will welcome us, and she will also acknowledge those very special guests from Cyprus who are honoring us with their presence in this opening ceremony. So, Dr. Bennett, you have the floor. Good evening, everyone, from me as well. I hope everybody 
can hear me, can hear me clearly, and not too loud, not too quiet. It is really a great pleasure to host this year this uh, European conference. For some of you, uh, you know that every year we were holding the Middle East Women's Conference for Peace with uh, mainly uh, Middle Eastern uh, participants from all leaders from the different Middle Eastern countries with the purpose of uh, proceeding and uh, advancing peace in any way every country would need. And this is always our desire. And you have a very important element of making peace, which is truly really giving healing and giving the possibility to every people, every person to have uh, hope. And um, really, I personally, I have, I'm, I'm not secret, uh, although I said that this country is uh, hosting, um, is I have lived here for 11 years. It has been my great, great pleasure to spend time with um, uh, my Korean uh, Cypriot uh, brothers and sisters, I would say, and so pleasant and so good. I had the opportunity to recognize a heart of peace uh, really in Cyprus, although there are many problems. And there is a great um, headache, I should say, for everyone in this country. Every national of uh, Cyprus wants their country all whole. Uh, everyone, whether it is a Greek Cypriot or a Turkish Cypriot, they want all the, the country to be one. This is not happening right now. And uh, I believe it is important that we all contribute in helping um, as well as other countries, also Cyprus, to, uh, to find a, a good way of uh, uniting. So um, this evening, I had, a, I had the great pleasure to welcome the first lady of this country, Mrs. Filipa Kiesara, a very um, wonderful person from what I have read from her CV. She has studied in many places, in Greece, in England, and here, of course, in Cyprus. And uh, really, I can feel from her presence and from her ways that she's a person that can start a new uh, way of thinking and probably a new page for this country. They have, been, they have become uh, presidents of uh, Cyprus with her husband, uh, his Excellency uh, Nikos Christodoulidis, they have become um, the, the couple, the presidential couple, not long ago. How many months? Since April or maybe before? Very short time. I will let her say more, but um, really I'm very happy to introduce her and to give her the floor right now. Thank you. President, um, Excellency, um, I am. It is with uh, always with great pleasure um, that I uh, join such events, um, and uh, I welcome you here today. And thank you uh, so much for giving me this opportunity to address uh, your annual Women's Leadership Conference. I wish first uh, to congratulate you. Uh, for your hard work and uh, your contribution throughout the years and um, it was indeed a very inspiring uh, speech and uh, that we heard uh, from your experience in Rwanda it, it's indeed a unique opportunity I mean I, I still remember when I 
was part of the Cyprus delegation visiting, it was a Chokan, uh, the heads of uh, Commonwealth, uh, back many years ago uh, in Uganda, and uh, I still remember it. Um, these people, and um, you know, uh, they differ from, um, from us in the way they live, but um, I will never forget the vibes that there were, despite the difficulties, the vibes you, you, you get from, from there, uh, they were so positive, and the smile in the faces of little children um, who um, have nothing if you compare with our children. But you could see happiness, and um, uh, I will never forget it. Um, I'll go back uh, to what I was planning to say. Um, it is uh, indeed a great privilege to host you in Cyprus um, and um, to be uh, together with all those distinguished participants from women from around the world. Um, it is true that peace uh, cannot come without the active participation of women in diplomacy in general and in peace building process. And I have to say that um, today's conference and I mean the subject that you uh, choose is extremely timely. War, conflict and terrorism is once again in our neighborhood and we are all devastated by the human losses, what we experience uh, um, the harm to societies, to economies, to the environment, to the new generations. We, ans we once again realize that women and children continue to be, um, to be used as a weapon, fortunately, of war and terrorism, and um, they remain um, vulnerable and unprotected, especially under war circumstances. Women and children um, are very, very often victims of violence, sexual violence, including rape and gun rape, victims of sexual and labor trafficking, still in 2023. And this is extremely disappointing. Um, almost 80 years uh, after the UN Charter, after the um, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, after the Convention of European um, uh, Council uh, on Human Rights. Here in this country, in Cyprus, um, we have suffered a lot and we are still suffering uh, the consequences of a tragic invasion of uh, 1974 by Turkey. And occupation is still on and um, uh, we have to say that uh, uh, there were horrible effects to the society uh, and that uh, many, many women, thousands of women, had suffered tremendously and are still suffering and newer generations. And we do hope uh, that um, uh, we will soon have positive news and that um, we will manage to go back to the table of negotiations and through diplomacy and through dialogue, we will uh, be the generation that will reunify, reunify Cyprus. <laughs> Dear guests, I strongly believe in the power, I strongly believe in diplomacy um, as a transformative and powerful tool um, of um, International dialogue and diplomacy um, are for uh, I, what I believe is that it's the only way forward uh, to resolve conflicts and to secure peace. In this context, multilateralism, multilateralism should play a leading role as well in conflict resolution and peace rebuilding within communities, societies, and across the world. And women must have a role, an equal role, in international relations contact. I would like to refer here to important UN Security Council resolutions, um, like the 1325, that um, underline uh, that the disproportionate and negative impact of war and conflict on women and girls 
including sexual violence and gender-based violence faced by women in a greater extent. At the same, these resolutions recognize the role of women in prevention of conflicts, resolving and maintaining and rebuilding peace. I'm glad that uh, in Cyprus, we have managed to address many issues uh, regarding the equal participation of women in the framework of the new government. For me, as a career diplomat, I saw it in action. Women are an added value to negotiations uh, with their genuine skills of being fair, of being reasonable, of being sensitive, of being uh, practical, results oriented, and they have they never lose their empathy, they never lose uh, their sensitivity. And we saw it from your president, that under any circumstances, um, in all negotiations, we're trying to be fair and to do the correct, what is right and what is fair for everybody. So these are female characteristics that I believe are extremely important in any negotiation and they are bringing this added value before I close, um, I would like to mention uh, about the new government that um, uh, it's committed to the strengthening of the active participation of women in decision making and the acceleration of the promotion of gender equality. An example related to the participation of women in decision making is the high number of appointments by the president, by my husband in the ministerial council, both ministers, deputy ministers, commissioners, and high-level officials, we have reached in Cyprus for the first time the percentage of 41, uh, which is a good number for the European country. Um, apart from that, we had uh, two important decisions by the cabinet. One is related to the enrichment and strengthening of the role of the Office of the Commissioner for Gender Equality. Uh, which is now undertaking uh, the drafting, coordination, monitoring, and evaluation of the new strategy of gender equality um, till 2026. And then another important decision is that um, is the appointment of gender focal points in each ministry and deputy ministry in order to implement specific strategies. Distinguished guests. We are fully aware that the efforts for equality between women and men and transforming our work through advancing peace goes hand in hand, but is uh, indeed a challenge, a big challenge, a very challenging task. Uh, it will be uh, only possible if we allow it to be and if we reduce uh, if we reduce uh, uh, instead of accelerating uh, our efforts. So we can make it happen. It's difficult, but we can make equality happen. I would like to underline that the aim is not solely intended to protect the human rights of women. The strengthening and empowering of women's well-being and their rights will simultaneously strengthen the effort for full and substantial equality, which undoubtedly contributes to more healthy societies, economic development, creating the basis and prospects for sustainable development. We need to ensure that all the means are there for the women. And this is really important uh, for me, so that women can realistically pursue um, their dreams. They can do what they want. Only if they have the means uh, in their everyday life, they can pursue their dreams without having to give up their role as a mother, as a daughter. So this is extremely important. And that's why uh, this government is trying to provide to women all these means so that they can actually go to work participating in decision and making bodies and follow any career they would like to, um, anything they want to do. Peace and security are vital, are necessary ingredients for humanity and we can only transform our world through the building of peace culture and human dignity if we secure women's rights and active participation 
and if we can manage to give women all the means so they can continue to be the power also in their family because it's extremely important to be able to continue to play the role of the mother so that they make sure that new generations have the right um, principles and basis to continue for a better world for everybody. Thank you very much and I wish you all the success. Not playing a fair game. Corruption is like not playing a fair game. So 
this I was particularly touched and uh, I want to congratulate especially. So uh, she passed, she managed to pass this on the, uh, in the parliament and uh, even the, the, uh, she received a, um, an honor from the parliament for her achievement. Uh, human rights, also she worked on the human rights and uh, an inclusive society, which uh, uh, she promoted the national strategy and action plan for the prevention of all violence against women in an example is another example of her ministry's work. And of course, she's a very successful businesswoman, and having had the leadership roles in several national and international businesses. And also beyond um, government and professional activities, she has been active in civil society, where she has been advocating for women's rights, and she worked together with members from the two communities, the Turkish Cypriot community and the Greek Cypriot community, to bring women together uh, closer. And this is very important, as I was saying before, it is really key for this country. So um, she, is, uh, she has studied uh, law, and uh, also Mrs. Rakos, she is married, and there is her husband, she is accompanied by her husband, and she has a son and two granddaughters. So, um, our organization would like to give her an award, and I would like to call on uh, Mrs. Uh, Yorgala to bring the award, and also Mrs. Rappos to come. And our international president and uh, our um, European president. As I was explaining before, this is the WWP Europe Conference. So we have the President of uh, the Europe Chapter, the International. Uh, it's an award written in Greek, but the award definitely understands it very well. I will quickly say what is written there. Um, she is awarded for her significant contribution to the reform of the legislative framework of justice and for her fight against corruption, as well as for her multidimensional and timeless contribution to the public affairs. So. Distinguished guests, I must say that after I heard the message of the president, I felt speechless. However, I came here to express my heartfelt thanks to the Women's Federation for World Peace Europe for this award and this is what I will do. 
It is indeed a great honor for me to stand before you, women leaders from 36 countries, with commitment and active presence on the road to empower women and girls as peace builders and leaders. You, the women in action, who acknowledge and embrace the concept of connected world in your pursuit for solidarity and for an inclusive, democratic society with gender equality. I look forward to sharing your knowledge and experiences, and I wish every success to your deliberations in the next two days, and I wish that you will enjoy your stay in Cyprus. I'd like to take this opportunity to especially thank Dr. Zoe Bennett and Sofia Gorgala, thank you very much, for giving me not only the opportunity to, for this honorable distinction, but also to get to know the remarkable and diverse work of WFWP. Transforming our world through advancing peace, it is so important today as ever. We are our expectation that progress achieved over the last years would have given us a better world. We witness fearful conflicts with unfolding consequences, the extent of which one cannot predict. Conflicts which frighten every thinking person and so close to us. As a woman who experienced first time the terrible consequences of war, having lost a family member back in 1974, and who grew up experiencing conflict in a country that remains divided today, I can tell you one thing that however difficult may be the road to reconciliation, this is the only way forward, so that no person, Greek or Turkish Cypriot or other, would be found in my position again. I humbly accept this honorary distinction, not as an individual achievement, but as a testament to the tireless dedication of countless women who fought for peace, justice, and human rights over the years. Important organizations like FWFP can creatively enrich international institutions with ideas and solutions to today's important problems. Something we urgently need this time so, I take this opportunity of your wonderful initiative to hold this important seminar in Cyprus to invite you to support the efforts of the thousands of Cypriot women, Greek and Turkish Cypriots, who claim freedom, peace, reconciliation, and an open horizon of opportunities for all Cypriots. I want to assure you that this award for me is a call to further action and reminds me of the work that lies ahead of us. And to this direction, I assure you, I remain committed. Thank you very much. Enjoy your evening. And thank you for your attention. ladies, promising ladies for uh, the Society of Cyprus and for the world of course. Thank you very much for that. And we now conclude the opening ceremony, wishing that this conference through its discussions will contribute to advance the creation of a culture of peace and human dignity. We hope we will be able to motivate individuals, organizations, governments to work together 
and we will walk towards a free, peaceful, and dignified coexistence. Yeah. Thank you very much, and enjoy your, your dinner now. <laughs>